All right, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, so thank you for the introduction. I'm uh, the director for Gameloft Malaysia and in charge of uh, the Philippines and Singapore as well. So we have our office actually just across the street. So very convenient, the team is here. Um, so yeah, this is really uh, our neighborhood here in, uh, in KL Central. So um, let me uh, walk you through um, a firstly a presentation of the company itself and then we'll zoom on uh, Southeast Asia and look at the growth engine for the next few years and even next few months. All right, so first of all, uh, Gameloft uh, is quite of a uh, dinosaur in this uh, very young industry, in the sense that we're here from the very beginning. Uh, if you remember back in the days when we were all with our Nokia 3310 uh, playing Snake, right? This is when our CEO had the vision uh, to start bringing the fun to the mobile, all right? So we started very, uh, with a lot of uh, humility with what was available back then. So you can see here uh, a few examples of devices on which we've worked across the years. Um, so our motto is really to, to be universal uh, in terms of uh, device coverage and to be also uh, everything in-house, okay? So we have developed all this game in-house across the years. Um, so that's, yeah, just a, a few screenshots that, that will probably uh, remember some good memories to a few of you. All right, so uh, we are in a very fragmented industry, all right? Because the mobile uh, segment, as you know, is very diverse. You have many manufacturers, you have many different stores. So from a customer perspective, um, you have so many options where to find the content. So our legacy business, if I go uh, from uh, our historical partnerships, were mostly through the telco platforms. So if we take Malaysia, for instance, the Maxis, WAP, Cellcom, DG, etc., right? And then came the direct partnership with the manufacturers, whereby we would directly embark our content onto the devices even before they go to market. And nowadays, as you all know, you have Google Play, Apple Store, Windows Store that we also cover. So our intent is really to provide the content uh, the easiest way for our customers using different channels, whether it's directly on your phone or from the store, either from the OEM or from the telco. So to date, and if we consider only uh, iOS, Google Play, and Windows Phone, we're talking about uh, 1 million downloads uh, for Gameloft. So that makes us the worldwide leader um, for uh, mobile gaming. Um, I guess you heard of App Annie, which is like the Alexa.com for uh, application, mobile applications. So according to uh, App Annie, we are number one in terms of uh, volume of download worldwide. So globally, Gameloft, as I mentioned, our DNA is really about quality gaming in-house developed. So we do have studios all around the world. We have about 27 studios around the world where we develop our content uh, on any kind of uh, mobile platform you can think of, especially for the mobile and tablets. But we also have some other lines of uh, businesses. All right, so we have those studios all around the world to adapt, of course, to different culture, different tastes, different platforms. Uh, so that means a very close collaboration with all the phone and tablet manufacturers. So we have the information firsthand, and we can develop in advance, of course, the appropriate and the suitable content for each of those uh, platforms. In terms of uh, sales and marketing, we have about 40 offices worldwide. So the office we have here in Malaysia is, uh, is one of them. Uh, we created the, the entity here about two, three years ago. All right. Um, in terms of reach, we have about 163 million active users on a monthly basis. And uh, in, on a daily basis, about 20 million people playing our games. So um, here is just a quick uh, chart to explain a bit about the um, evolution of mobile gaming. Okay, so we came from a very, um, I would say, traditional model whereby you get your game for a certain price up front and then you enjoy it until the end, all right? Similar model to what you have in the console gaming or in the PC gaming back then. So we, we moved from this very traditional model to a more uh, open model that we refer to as a freemium or free-to-play model, whereby you can download your content for free, but you are offered the option to get some in-app purchases once you play the game to make it to the next level or to get extra rewards to buy the fastest car and so on and so forth, all right? And now we are moving again to a new phase, uh, which is the advertisement paid games, all right? Meaning that the user can enjoy the full experience of the mobile game uh, without paying a dime, basically. All the expenses and all the revenues being driven simply by advertising. Okay, so this is really the way we are looking uh, in the future of the company. Um, so, of course, we still have uh, a very few premium titles 
And many of our games offer the opportunity for the consumer to actually buy the in-app purchase. But if you don't want to buy, that's fine. We, you, you just have a few like very relevant and targeted advertising to cover the expenses, all right? So now a quick zoom about Malaysia and how Malaysia is connected, okay? I think this is a very interesting example because it's a well-advanced uh, developing country yet and where technology is uh, of paramount importance. So if you look at the internet users who are as of the end of, uh, at the beginning of 2015, around 61%, uh, which is above the worldwide average, but still not at the, you know, together with the top countries. Broadband users still relatively limited uh, due to some geographical constraints. But if you look at the mobile users, we are, lo we are looking at w above 140% mobile penetration. This is huge. Like, there is almost two mobile per person per capita in Malaysia. So you can imagine the rich, right? Um, so all those mobile are well connected to a fairly stable network if you compare to other countries uh, in Southeast Asia, like in the Philippines, for instance, or in Indonesia, the network is still relatively stable. So this is really where we're tapping into. Because you have to, to look at it, for instance, in the case of Malaysia. Of course, you have the urban crowd based in the Klang Valley, but you also have all the people living in kampungs outside where entertainment source are not many, you know? It's not like tonight are we going to a movie, or are we going to a restaurant, or are we going to play? Not really, for many people. So that's why the mobile is a very powerful tool to reach any customer, anywhere it is pretty much, and to download and enjoy our content at any time. So people spend in Malaysia about three hours a day on their mobile, okay? And this is a trend that we have observed in Southeast Asia, in most countries. So three hours per day is a lot of time to tap on, and very interestingly, actually gaming comes first when it comes to the amount of time spent. So we are looking at about one hour a day playing games on mobile on average, all right, per, uh, per user. Uh, our reach in Malaysia, to give you some, some figures, about 1.5 million monthly active users, all right? So we are aiming, hopefully by the end of the year, at reaching about 10% of the overall population of the country who would be playing our games. Okay, so, as I was mentioning to you earlier, the, one of our new directions is definitely to look at advertising opportunities, meaning that the gaming experience will be completely free, the gaming experience will remain like high quality because this is definitely our DNA, but we will simply uh, fund the development of the new games through advertising, all right? So how does it work? Basically, we have a very direct approach. Once again, it's in-house, so we have our own sales team advertising team will go and discuss with virtually any brand because mobile gaming is really for everybody. It's not anymore like the console gaming or maybe the PC gaming segment, which was mostly toward a male young audience or sometimes not so young. But in the case of mobile gaming, we're really looking at a well-balanced uh, audience with also female, with also people of, from older generations because we have very different types of games. You have the very casual games, the puzzle games, for instance, that can be played by a kid or by a grandma or by a parent or by your brother, by pretty much anyone. And we still have also the core gaming experience provided by uh, first personal shooting games such as Nova, for instance, where it's more technical and it's more for people who are really into like the gaming, like the full gaming experience, right? So direct relationship, in-house flexibility on the campaigns and all the details I, I, will, I will come uh, across after. So, here is the, a, very quick, uh, a very quick snap at our uh, typical audiences, all right? So as I was saying, we have games that are, very, that are covering pretty much any type of, uh, of uh, demographics. If we think about Uno, for instance, Uno and Friends, it's a very family-friendly game. It can be played by kids or by adults. We also have more gamer-oriented. Um, and of course, the gender is very important for us. Because we really, when you look at the demographics in Malaysia, for instance, and it's the truth in many countries in Southeast Asia, you have as many smartphone users, if not more, female than male, okay? So that goes back to the demographics. And so it's very important for us to be able to reach all this female audience with appropriate content. Uh, so we have many, many like licenses that are more geared toward a female audience. And then of course, the very like diverse balanced games. All right, so in terms of advertising option, what do we offer? So if you download a, a Game Love game today, you will see by yourself how it works. We have more like the traditional media stand whereby you can put through a banner or through an interstitial 
all your, uh, your con display your content. You can also do it through a video. Okay? And I would like to stress here one thing is that we really put an emphasis on targeting the user in a way that the commercial that will pop up is very likely to be like a product that you want to or a service that you are interested in. So how we do that? We have in-game survey, we have cross-check data with Facebook so that we know exactly the type of person we are talking to. Am I talking to someone who has children or not? Am I talking to a male or a female? Am I talking to someone who lives in a city, etc., etc. Okay? So we put also some capping options, meaning that you won't see the same advertising more than once or twice a day. Okay? You know how annoying or intrusive it can be when you browse YouTube and you have like five times in a row the same advertising, right? So this is absolutely something we need to avoid. We want to make the experience as fruitful as possible by putting those capping limits. Yeah? Uh, and then, of course, the native uh, model that I will show you a very quick video afterwards so you know what, I, what can be done here in terms of fully uh, branded experience within the Game Love game, all right? So, uh, zoom on the interstitial options that we have, okay? So interstitial, as you know, Let's say you're playing your uh, level, you want to go back to the main menu to change your character, to change your car. Then you can have the simple, very like, awareness-oriented option, whereby you just have, like, for instance, for a movie. Okay, the movie uh, will be released next month in two weeks. You can have the rich media solution, which is much more engaging, whereby the user can play around with the product. So in this case, it's a car, but you can think about it for a mobile, even for a service, so where you can browse and play around the advertising to see what are the, all the features uh, offered by this, uh, in this uh, service. The form, very useful if uh, for, here is the case of an insurance, whereby you want to collect customer data. There we go, very simple information, name, emails, phone. And the last one is uh, probably the, the funniest one, because after all, games are what we do best, is that we develop in-house mini games so it's a game within a game, right, uh, that we will customize for your brand. So your brand will be able to be displayed in a very fun and entertaining way to the customer. Okay? So why the mini games? Of course, because of the increased conversion rate. So how do we also achieve high conversion? So number one, all the mini games are developed in-house in our studios. So we have, of course, the 15 years experience of how to do a game, but also we will give the user some incentives and some reward, okay? Meaning that if you perform the game, then you will get either real-life prizes or in-game reward. So I'm talking about extra credits, extra coins. So, of course, the brand exposure is completely changed from a simple uh, standing you know, interstitial, because then you have the action with the brand. And that, that makes a big difference from all the campaigns we've run so far. We've, we've seen, like, a incredible uh, transformation from those. So um, the highlight on engagement advertising. So here you can see two examples, one with a video, one with the, a simple game that we did for, uh, you know, the Maze Runner, the movie. So we created a MIDI game whereby you have to get out of the maze, okay, in a certain time. And if you manage to get out of the maze in less than one minute, you get your, uh, you get your reward. So I want to stress here the different types of reward that we can give our user within our games. It's either um, in-game credits that are provided by Gameloft for free, or real-life prizes. So in this case, for instance, just a screenshot with a famous fast food chain. So the call to action and the prize are there, meaning that you play, you win, great. I give you a voucher. I give you a voucher about, that you can redeem in any store, and not only I give you the voucher, but also I tell you where to locate the closest store. Okay, so it's, a, it's an overall, it's a very holistic uh, solution for the brand, whereby you actually drive the user directly to your retail point from our games and from a very simple mini game, which is inside the game itself. So now a video to show you our uh, branding opportunities uh, that we called uh, Time Limited Event. So that's an opportunity for brands to become part of the game itself. So I will let you enjoy the video.
All right, so it's a very quick presentation, uh, trying to give you a taste here of what we can also achieve at a further level of integration within the game for the brands. Here is a case study for Mercedes. So what you have to keep in mind is that when you do a time-limited event, which usually runs over a period of four to seven days, we will actually create, for instance, in this case it's Asphalt, our famous uh, racing game, maybe some of you have played it. Uh, we'll create your own tournament, your own cup within the game. And that applies to a wide range of games, as per the, the video was showing. So you can actually like, become a part of the game itself on your targeted countries for a certain amount of time. All right, so here is what we, we've done in the, in the Middle East with uh, Mercedes. Uh, so pretty successful event over uh, seven days. It was split in, in two times. So keep in mind that the user will see the push notifications, the entry banners, and also in the menu, you will be present inside the game. So that's why we refer to it as a native opportunity. It's really a chance for you to become part of the game itself. Uh, some important information about uh, the targeting capabilities for the advertising. I guess many of you are marketers, so you know how important it is. Uh, so here, of course, we are looking at a uh, country targeting. Uh, we are also working on solution for geolocalization to go very deep down in the details, for instance, airport, KL Central, etc. Uh, the time, day, and hour. Okay, If you want to target people only after office hours or during office hours, it's no problem for us. We can uh, settle the, the campaign in this way. We also look at different options in terms of OS version um, and, of course, for the devices. So if you are more in the mobile industry directly and you want, let's say, to go after your competitors or you want to go do a retention for your existing customers, then we can target only the users who are on certain types of device. Um, and, of course, same goes to the carrier. Let's say you're uh, a local carrier, you want to improve your retention, you want to inform your existing customers about what comes next, what will be the next data plan, then you can only message and orient your message toward the existing customers that you have. Uh, tracking cap capabilities, so likewise, we really want to go in the details here uh, toward our customers, and we really provide all the details. You can plug your own uh, tracking system into it, and you can see live the, the results of clicks, transformation, and so on and so forth. Uh, so we are integrating on a regular basis new tracking system options uh, because it's quite important, of course, to, complete the, to be completely transparent about the advertising solutions here. Um, so just uh, to, to conclude, um, just to, to give you a, a few insights about our culture and uh, how we, we proceed here. So what we've, what we've kept all over this, uh, the past 16 years that Gameloft has been in the business now is really this, a strong brand identity with uh, an emphasis on developing in-house all our content, whether we are talking about the games, the very famous games like Minion Rush, Asphalt, or the mini games also that we, we develop for advertising. Everything is in-house, and we want to keep the control over our production because we want our customers to remain, of course, as loyal as possible. And we've had people following us for more than 10 years now. And we want to keep this control over the, the content being delivered by Gameloft. So, of course, innovation, and it's a never-changing environment, as you know. Uh, on a daily basis, you have new smartphones being released and new tablets. So it's on us to always follow and to always work very closely with all the manufacturers. So we are ready, and we are even like on advance, in advance sometimes on the market, so we can really release the game like right at the same time as the device. It's uh, crucial for us. And of course, localization. This is why we have offices all around the world. This is why we have an office here in Malaysia, for instance, also, is that we want to give always to our product uh, a local flavor or to the product or to all the marketing campaigns being launched around the launch of a new product. It's always localized, it's always uh, made, tailored, tailor-made for the country and for the audience uh, in this very country. So thank you very much for your attention. Um, I wish you a very pleasant uh, continuation and um, feel free to reach out to me later or to my team who is just there uh, if you want more information about Gameloft uh, in Malaysia and Southeast Asia. Thank you very much.